Why don't you turn your Bibles tonight to the book of Nehemiah, chapter number one? The Nehemiah is a is a is a great story in the Bible. Brother Walker uh, talked about it this morning a little bit. He talked about Nehemiah. And I want you to just uh, I want you to look at some things that I, I don't know if you've seen this before in the book of Nehemiah, but I just I, I was I was uh, preaching or reading through the book of Nehemiah a few months ago, I guess a couple years ago now, and uh, just, just something that jumped out to me in the story of, of Nehemiah. I want you to look at Nehemiah chapter 1, verse number 4, and I want you to stand with me just in the honor of the reading of God's Word. And uh, the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse number 4, It came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now I want you to turn your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter number 6. Nehemiah chapter number 6. And verse number 15. The Bible says, So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month he will in 50 and 2 days. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless the, the preaching of your word this evening. I pray that you do a work in our hearts. Most of all, I pray for one of your lost that be saved. And Lord, I pray that every, every person under this tent, Lord, would be reminded of the importance of their life and their service for you. I pray God you speak to our hearts. I pray God you bless this service. We thank you for it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. The book of Nehemiah is, is a is a book that I that I really love because uh, Nehemiah was he was not a he was not a pastor he was not a preacher he was a he was a man he was a cupbearer in a in a strange place in a, in a foreign place and God got a hold of Nehemiah in such a way that it created on the inside of Nehemiah a burning desire to accomplish something for God. Nehemiah again was a cupbearer to a foreign king and he had been taken into captivity. Nehemiah in, in verse number or in chapter number one, verse number two, you see that Nehemiah asked about the place of Jerusalem. He asked, How is it back home? What, what's going on in the city of Jerusalem? And, and and in verse number three he gets the answer. Basically the, the walls of the city had been had been broken down. Uh, the gates of the city were burned. And when Nehemiah heard that, when he heard those things, then, then Nehemiah began, he did something that, that I that I wish that we that or that I pray would happen to all of us. The Bible says that when he heard, he didn't see, he hadn't saw the devastation of the of the city of Jerusalem yet. He hadn't saw it. But he began in his mind to begin to just burn on the inside. And it, it was a place that he had loved. It's a place that he wanted to go back to. And the Bible says that he wept and he mourned and he fasted and he prayed for not just a minute or two, but, but for certain days, a long day. I believe it was a, it was a long time that, 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 that he, not, not months or anything, but, but more than just a 30-minute prayer, God, please help somebody to go build the walls back in Jerusalem. That's not the prayer that Nehemiah had. It was a prayer, it was a prayer of, a, of, a, of a burdened heart that, that, that caused him to want to do something spe special for God. God. If you read on in, in the in the continue reading chapter one, you'll see that Nehemiah began to pray and he began to ask for God to do something, basically forgive them of their sin, forgive them of their failures, forgive them of their shortcomings, and, and Lord, would you please allow me basically to be used to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Now, it's not the message, but it wouldn't take us long. For us to look around our cities and towns and our hours yep. and our little country uh, places that we live in and see that the walls of many things in America are being torn down. It doesn't take us long to see that lives are being torn apart and devastated by sin. And, and let me say, the Bible says for all have sinned and 
come short of the glory of God, sir. So, so you stink just like everybody else stinks. I sin just like everybody else sin. Nobody rode a high horse up here today because we're all sinners, right? And so, so we can, and, and, and if we look at the the way the world is around us, and it don't create something inside of us to want to do something for Him, then something's wrong with our walk with God. Because when you walk with God and you talk to God and you see the devastation going on, it creates in you a desire to want to do something to make a difference. Chapter 2, he goes in before King Artaxerxes and uh, King Artaxerxes says, Nehemiah, what's wrong with you? He says, your, your face, you're your downtrodden, you're, you're discouraged. And Nehemiah basically said to the king, well, basically, how would you feel if your homeland was destroyed like my homeland yes. is? The king said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to write letters. I want to go back home and I want to, and I want to rebuild the walls of the city of Jerusalem. I want to do something. I want to get my homeland, I want to get it back to where it needs to be. And he said, okay, uh, not only will I let you go, but I'll pay for the things that you need to rebuild the walls of the city. I'm going to tell you something, when God gets into something, God gets into something. When God's into something right here in Nehemiah chapter 2. If you look on, there, you'll see that Nehemiah makes the journey to this place. There's some people with him that goes along the journey with him and as Nehemiah begins to look at what he had seen only in his mind, I believe it created his burden to be an even heavier burden. I believe it created in Nehemiah an even greater desire to do something. I believe it created in him a desire to want to please God even more. I believe that. The Bible says that Nehemiah went out in the, in the dark of the night and he began to walk through the city uh, streets and he began to step over rocks. That once was a great and mighty wall. Now he's walking through them. And not, the Bible says that not even a donkey could walk through the, the, the rubble. The rubbish was so bad. When Nehemiah saw that, the Bible says that the next thing he done was he went to the men that was with him and he said, this is what I think we ought to do. And those men said, let's rise up and build. Fast forward to chapter number 6. The Bible says in verse 15 of chapter 6 that in 52 days, in 52 days, the wall was finished. Have you ever been to Jerusalem? Anybody ever been to Jerusalem? Anybody ever been to Jerusalem? I got to go to Jerusalem in 2010. The walls are big. They didn't have caterpillar escalator back then. Brother. They didn't have all the things. They had a burden for the city to be rebuilt. And it was rebuilt. I remember reading the story of Nehemiah all my life. And I always would get to chapter 3. And it was a bunch of names. His bunch is bordering. Forgive me, Lord, but I mean, it, 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 it was just reading it. I was like, well, in this chapter, I'm going to have to get through it. But I want you to look at Nehemiah chapter 3, and I want to show you what, what jumped out at me on, in Nehemiah chapter 3. The Bible says, in verse number 1 in Elisha, the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priest, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it, set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mia, they sanctified it, unto the path, unto the tower of Hananel. Verse number two, the Bible says, and next unto him builded the men of Jericho. Next to them builded Zachor, the son of Imri. If you read chapter three, the three words and next unto him jumped out at me one day and I'm like, Nehemiah was a great man of God. But Nehemiah didn't build those walls back by himself. When Nehemiah started the work for God. Chapter 3 says, and next unto him was 
and next unto him was, and next unto him was, and next unto him was, and next unto him was. And you know what their goal was? Their goal was the very same thing to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. You say, what's the big deal about that? I want to show you what the big deal about that was. Number one, the reason they were there next to Nehemiah building was because Nehemiah had asked them to be part of his burden. He had asked them, I want you to see the destruction. I want you to see that we have a job to do and I want you to help me in this endeavor for God. That's right. That's right. They want you to see that those men were as faithful, although we don't know their name, Brother Charles. But those men were as faithful to the calling of God as Nehemiah was. Now some of you in here today, you're the pastor of a church. You're a youth leader. You are the one that God has given a burden to do something for God. It's your, it's my responsibility to go to those who serve in my church, who serve in your church, to go to them and say, Brother, I need you. I, I want you to help me in this endeavor that you've placed us in to serve God here in the city or the place you place. I, I, I want all the men of Gospel Life Baptist Church, I want you to come up here and stand with me for just a second. I want you to line up all the way across. I don't want any kids. I don't want, it, I want Caleb or Joshua yet. Get Brother Steve a chair over there. Right
But with God's help, next unto Him, yeah. next unto Him, yeah. next unto Him, yeah. next unto Him, yeah. and Him, and Him, and Him, and Him, yeah. and Him, and Him, and Him, and Him. God yeah. begins to do a work. Yeah. 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 And somebody else was added. I can't remember when everybody came. If you take away, now I'm going to show I'm going to get on them tonight. They don't know it, but I'm going to get on them. You're next to somebody at your church. Your preacher depends on you being faithful to church. Not just being on the back. Next unto him. There's people from all walks of life right there. There's my son playing the piano. Jeff owns a body shop. Nathan works for a gas company. Chad works on computers. He's smarter than anybody in here. This is a man of parables. Oh, wow. We got we got young men, Brother David Gray, young man got saved when he's 13. And he's in his spot. Look. The next unto him, next unto Harry is Dale. The next unto Dale is John. The next unto John is Matthew and, and uh, what's your name? Jason and Sambo and Randy and Brother Kelly and Danny and Brother Johnny Williams and all the way across to the other side to Brother Roger. But this is what we're trying to do, Caleb and Joshua and all the youngins that go to church of gospel life that are here, I want you to come up here. Hurry, hurry. You're young. I gotta hurry up. Now what we want to teach these guys is to join in and be next unto next unto now don't lose me. This is really important what I'm trying to tell you. Come on, If they're not in their spot where God put them to work for Him, the work of God at Gospel Life Baptist Church will not prosper. Because I can't do it by myself. We none can do it without God. Right. But the more next unto Him that we have, the greater outreach that we have as a church. Amen. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, I want our men to be next to me when the, when the when the flames of hell is coming out against our church. I don't want them there to fight. When we're in prayer meeting, I want to be next unto them to pray with them and to pray together. I want to see God just allow us to buy a, a eight and a half acre uh, a, a, a school uh, property, and, and and God sent more men and next unto Him to do another part of the ministry. And this is what I'm trying to tell you: whether you're, whether you're from Iowa or Maine or Virginia or West Virginia, God's got a plan for you. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but how many of you up here have been saved out of addiction? Right there. Come on. Hey. Alcoholism, hey. some kind of something. You put your hands up. Now, there are some people that use excuses. I can't do anything for God. My past is too bad. I don't see you anywhere in the Bible where Nehemiah said, let me check your background. Let me see what you've been into. This is what I found out. That the grace of God is greater than all my sin. And where sin can abound, grace is much more than that. And God can take a person and make them a new creature uh, to serve Him and to be used next unto Him. And next unto Him. It wasn't about Nehemiah really. Nehemiah just got the thing rolling. But then everybody else said, I tell you what, Nehemiah,
spark of flame that says to God, God, you saved my old wicked soul. And you deserve for me to do something for you. To be that certain man that God wants us to be. To be that person that Brother Walker was talking about today that gives our all for God next unto who you stand by. Who you stand by. Somebody talk about about your church. Don't stand by them. Thanks, God. Amen. The devil is trying to destroy the world. Don't stand next to them. Don't stand next to the Hollywood crowd, the rap music crowd, the liquor crowd. Don't stand beside them. Stand beside you some godly men. Get you some boys and teach them how to be soul winners and teach them how to love God and to pray. And listen, God will do a great and mighty work. Truth is, I didn't reach all these folks. Did I look at them too high? And I see what my men that God's give us at Gospel Life Baptist Church. You say that God arranged a team of people. Not so we could go out, stand around, and Spit and tell stories, although we do that too. Not a whole lot. <laughs> but so that we can stand beside each other. Amen. Make a difference. Amen. With God for us. Amen. The wall was finished in 52 days. It wasn't all because of Nehemiah. Because the next of him was next unto him was and they worked and they fought they had a sword in one hand and a crown in the other that's right are you standing in your spot where God puts you to stand are you doing what God wants you to do if you are you keep doing it You've allowed the world to change you and to change your burden. You ought to run to this altar tonight and say, God, look at back at me. You go back to your home church and you stand next to your preacher, next to your buddy, and you win souls, and you go after teenagers, and you run buses, and you do all that, and next year when we come back, well, I want to hear testimonies of hey, Brother Chris. Since last year, we've led 10 men to the Lord. Amen. Hey, Brother Chris, we started a new bus route. Brother Chris, we started this ministry. We've, 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 we've started new outreach programs. So if you just came to men on the mountain to get muddy and to get fat, you probably did both of them. But I hope that you came to say, God, I want to be closer to you. Yes. I hope this picture that you see up here don't leave your mind. You know what? I get discouraged sometimes. You know what encourages me? When I turn around, I see all these people standing next to me saying, Go on, preacher. Keep preaching, preacher. When I turn around, I see these young boys coming up, learning what it's like to know God. That helps me. That helps me keep quiet. You know what? I think they draw strength from each other. That's exactly right. Who stands beside Amen. Who stands beside Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And God, I pray that you help us tonight to make the decision to get in the work of God, to stand next to each other, to fight toe to toe against sin, hell, and the world. Pray God you use us in a greater way to reach folks for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. You go back to the city man. You know the the church building that we're in. The church building that we are in that's home 
was old hillbilly palace bar and grill. God changed that building to a church. And God is changing people into what He wants to do. Let's, let's sing a song and we're going to pour it.